Hi and welcome to another Type With Me. In this video, I'm going to explain to you what Keystone.js is and how you can use it within to your project. So Keystone.js has a beautiful website with a lot of information onto it. Keystone.js is something when you have your schema and your data and you want to have a beautiful management API or, or UI, sorry, and also an API, of course, eh, because they provide a powerful GraphQL API. Well, then that's something for you. You want to focus a little bit more on the front end, a little bit less on the back end. Well, then uh, try out Keystone.js. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's easy to uh, provide this API to other people that are not technical. They can provision your uh, data for it. And then the only thing you need to focus on is your schemas, your data, your GraphQL, and then of course your front end. So to start a Keystone app, the only thing you need to do is npm init Keystone app. When we do so, you will see that he will get certain uh, information from npm itself and then he will ask me a question and the question is what is the, uh, the name also notice that it's keystone 5 keystone 6 is in community preview as of now so maybe in the near future you will see that it's already Keystone 6, but now we are just using Keystone 5, right? Because that's stable and that's great to use. Um, you see here, learn more about the changes between Keystone 5 and Keystone Next on our website. So that's, that's something if you are more adventurous, you can also choose for Keystone Next. Uh, also, another thing that I noticed was that here you see installing dependencies with Yarn, but we are using NPM. So that's also <laughs> very funny that it's not using NPM. If I don't want to use Yarn, well, I don't want to use Yarn, right? But they are forcing me a little bit into that uh, kind of direction. All right, so now it's been generated, so we can go and take a look into it. And then you'll see here one of the things that's very important is the schema puts uh, ts right and here we see all the schemas that are being generated for us so if you just want to have that uh, over something else well you can just use that but I just want to explore a little bit more what is possible with schemas. So I'm going to change this, right? Because that's, of course, the best thing to learn something new. Yeah, so here you see here that we have user posts and tag lists. But of course, if you have your own schemas and your own kind of structure, well, then it's, it's easier to work with that within the future. So one of the things that I want to do is I want to clean it up a little bit here with schemas. So I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. And of course, when we do so, it will make more sense for us to look into the code and make more sense out of it, right? So, okay. Of course, here we have our user. And our user is has a list of fields. We have your name, email, we have your password, and we have your posts. And then you see here that our relationship is a post.author, which has a many, and that's equals to true, right? And then we have here our UI, which is a list view with initial columns, name, and posts. And of course, this one, the initial one, is just uh, created for um, setting up a basic block uh, kind of structure, right? So that you can provision your own posts. If I just save this, I'm just gonna run it. I'm gonna do npm run. Uh, but of course, I need to go to CD admin, right? And then I need to do npm uh, admin, CD admin. Then I need to do npm run dev.
And now you see here it starts Keystone uh, Dev Server starting at, and then you have your Graph API uh, starting on, and that's so that's the URL of your Graph QL uh, API. And then it's just generating GraphQL and Prisma schemas. Uh, it uses an uh, SQLite database, keystone.db. So that's also great. We don't need for just the development uh, a link to a Postgres API, right? So our admin UI is ready. So if I go then to this URL, we will see What's possible? So here I get welcome to keystone.js. I need to provide a name, so I put an admin. And here I can provide uh, an email. So I provide test at test.com maybe. I can set a password, so I do admin one, two, three, four. And you also admin one, two, three, four. If I do that I see that it's good so I'm gonna start and then thank you for installing Keystone GS while you're getting started check out the docs so like I said before schema.ts is a very important one if you really want to change the structure a little bit and I'm not gonna provide it into this video because it's just an introductory video about Keystone just to give you a little bit of um, uh, knowledge and, and 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 go with me about how to set things up right uh, but um yeah i'm not gonna sign up to uh to mail uh, or mailing list but uh, in my opinion it looks very great see here users so i have one user so if i click on it you'll see here that i have one user it's the admin user and then we have no no posts but then again we can create a post and then if we connect our front end he can just render out the posts there on our website and that that's just awesome right so maybe i'm gonna create a post here i'm gonna create hello from type wig me i'm gonna put some kind of text here this is the first blog post with keystone admin and I'm gonna create it and then you see here that it's been created you can add a user so you can we can create a user you can create a tag so I can say um, Hello, or something like that. No, I can create a tag. So now this has a tag hello. And then, of course, I think you can very easy create queries around that, right? So I'm gonna do save changes. My changes are in save now. So next thing that I want to explain to you is GraphQL and how to work with Apollo Studio and so on. It's something quite new for me but I'm, I'm really excited I think it's 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 a great thing to do because then you can very easily create your uh, your queries and yeah start tendering around with it right so um, I'm having already prepared some kind of query you see here that I have a post and then here I I clicked on certain fields that I just want so if I do here example queries you get the query back, right? So that's a great thing. Uh, another thing that I can add, for example, and I'm going to add it here at the top, is this one. That's the user. So uh, I'm just going to add it. You can see here if I do example, then you get the user back and then the post. Uh, but for example, if we go back here, so if I remove email, for example, um, and then I go back right here you see here that I have users and that I have 
a name, but I also want to have an email so I can very easily click on it and it will add it right here. So if I execute it right now, you will see here also the, the order is important. So first of all, the name, because I said that I first want, want the name, then I want the posts. So I get the posts and then I want the email. So I get email, right? And then these queries you can very easily use within your front end to query your back end uh, by this. Again, the schemas and how to define the schemas in Keystone.js is very important. They define a little bit how your data looks like. Like here, for example, your author it has a relationship to user.posts. So that's the reference. And then you have some things that you need to declare what's been displayed in the UI. So display mode cards, car fields, uh, inline edit, and then link to item, inline create, and so on. So that's a little bit deep diving into how you can define your schemas. And that's, I think, homework for you. Just create a basic schema, see how it works within Keystone and work yourself a little bit up into it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had something on this video. I hope you are excited to explore a little bit more about Keystone like I am and see you next time.